Can you guess what this is? A first hint, this is the antenna of an ESP32C6. And this is the antenna of the new module we will cover in this video. Second hint, this chip is hand soldered. The flux is still around and it is labeled ESP32C5. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, bringing you a new episode with fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you'll always sit in the first row. Who guessed it? This dev board contains an engineering sample of the new ESP32C5 chip. It is so new that it does not have a metal case. This was not very hard to guess. But what is so different about it? In the first hint, I showed you antennas. The C6 has a standard 2.4 GHz antenna. The C5, however, has two antennas, one for 2.4 and one for 5.8 GHz. So this is the first dual band chip of Espressif. After my first video about such a dual band module, we started to wait for a chip from Espressif. And we had to wait more than three years. But finally, it is here. It is based on the C6. So let's first look what's inside the C6. It is a single core RISC-V chip with a second low power core. It offers a ton of peripherals and also the newest security modules. And it offers a lot of wireless components. 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, BLE, Zigbee and Thread. All these Wi-Fi standards run on 2.4 GHz. This is why it only has one transmitter and one receiver. This is also why only one of the different standards can use the radio at one point in time. Currently, there is not a lot of information available for the C5. So, I have no block diagram. But I assume it will have a second Wi-Fi baseband module for 5.8 GHz, because this frequency range offers more speed and other functionalities than the 2.4 GHz. And, of course, it needs a second RF stack. It seems that the balloon and maybe the switch are no longer inside the chip. At least, this part looks like a balloon. In addition, it needs an entire new antenna. Fortunately, this antenna is only about half the size, because the frequency is more than double. So the overall antenna size stayed the same. Are there other differences? The dev kit looks very similar to the C6. The only difference is this voltage regulator. The linear regulator of the C5 dev kit seems to be replaced by a switching regulator. So let's connect this brand new chip with the Arduino IDE and try to upload the Blink example. Unfortunately, we do not yet find the C5 in the board's definitions. If we try the C6, as expected, it does not work. However, Espressif is working on including the C5 support in the Arduino IDE and we should soon get a preview. So I was happy when Pedro sent me two bin files to test the radio. One creates an access point and the other scans available networks. I used the ESP launchpad for the first time for uploading the files. It is a similar service many projects offer to upload binaries via a web browser. I had to choose DIY to select the bin files and enter 0x0 as the flash address. After connecting to the board, it does its thing. Because the console did not show the serial communication, I disconnected the board and changed to the Arduino IDE's serial monitor. After pressing the reset button, the C5 started to work and created an access point on the usual address. To test if it uses frequencies above 5 GHz, I connect my PC to the access point. Its SSID is my SSID and it really uses the 5.8 GHz band on channel 120. 
To be even more sure, I place a tiny SSA Ultra near its antenna and monitor the spectrum. Channel 120 is around 5.6 GHz and we see power in the area of 5.58 to 5.62 GHz. QED or Quote Era Demonstrandum as our math professor used to say. The second binary file scans all available SSIDs in my basement. We see it finds 2.4 GHz as well as 5 GHz nits. So both radios work as expected. Cool. Now we just have to wait till the modules appear on AliExpress or Amazon and Espressif integrates the C5 support first into their IDF and then into the Arduino IDE. Till then, we can play with the C6 and its SIGPI functionality, for example. I choose the light bulb example. If you select the proper setup parameters, it works. Home Assistant discovers the device without any problems and I can switch the LED on the kit. Everything as expected. However, the current consumption is not SIGPI like. It is around 70 mA for the module and 90 mA for the entire board. This does not matter for a light bulb because such devices are usually connected to mains. So let's try another example, a PIR sensor. These Akara sensors in my lab run for over a year on a single coin cell. Unfortunately, the ESP32C6 consumes the same amount of power configured as a PIR sensor as before as a light bulb, so definitely not usable for coin cell operated devices. So all in all, the C5 is a perfect solution if you live in a congested area where the 2.4 GHz band is occupied. This is probably less critical for sensors with low data rates. However, it can be vital for applications involving video. Remember that the range of 5.8 GHz devices is shorter, particularly in areas with walls. Will the C5 replace the C6? That depends a lot on pricing. If both chips have a similar price, there is a big incentive for makers to change to the C5 because we get more flexibility. If there will be a premium price for the 5.8 GHz functionality, I assume the two versions will coexist. That was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. If you found this video useful or interesting, please support the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.